Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I want to give you my quick take on two full-frame lenses from Viltrox in Sony E-mount. They're $380 and $360 respectively, 35 and 50 millimeter 1.8 primes. The last 1.8 prime I tested from Viltrox, their $400 85, did surprisingly well against Sony's excellent but 50% more expensive at $600, 85 1.8, did well even against the three times the price $1,200 Zeiss Batis, 85 1.8. I'll put a link to that review in the show notes down below. I thus had fairly high expectations for the 35 and 50 beyond aggressive pricing. Solid build quality, nice straightforward industrial design, good if not spectacular autofocus, and surprisingly good image quality, notably especially for edge-to-edge -edge sharpness though, with more chromatic aberration than I'd like wide open even after in-camera correction. And that is basically how it played out, save for two things. Chromatic aberration was even worse wide open than I remember on the 85, and a new dedicated aperture ring on both of them, which got me excited at first, is surprisingly stiff and loud, a combination perhaps of insufficient lubrication and maybe too much air making its way into the mechanism itself. I don't have that problem on the 35. Now, with this said, these lenses are sharp and tasty. All it took was one image from each lens at f5.6 on our 12 megapixel a7S III out in the real world earlier this year at real world focusing distances to reaffirm my sense that Viltrox is a company to watch. Both lenses clearly out-resolved the a7S III's sensor. In our testing, these lenses also out-resolved our go-to lens for 4K video, the Tamron 28-75 2.8 G2, which is what I'm using right now on an A7 IV. And that is somewhere between impressive and shocking, actually. On the other hand, all it took was one image from each lens at f1.8 on the A7 IV in the Bat Studio downstairs at close to minimum focusing distance and very high magnification compared again to the Tamron to remind me of that one clear weakness, which as I just said, is worse than it was on the 85. That chromatic aberration is, it's rampant really. lateral and longitudinal chromatic aberration wide open. Even stopped down a bit, the Tamron zoom beat them for chromatic aberration. It was only at f4 or 5.6 that they caught up, which is not how primes are supposed to work. Vignetting, too, cleaned up nicely by then, although I don't understand why the in-camera corrections don't work better, and yes, I checked to make sure they were turned on. Of course, one can argue that chromatic aberration doesn't matter that much, for photographers anyway, if, say, you're only shooting black and white, or stop down to f5.6, or willing to futz with defringing in post. I don't really like these arguments. Yeah, sure, it's easy enough to correct for lateral chromatic aberration in Lightroom for stills, but it's not really feasible for longitudinal CA. And I simply don't want to spend time with glass I know I'll have to correct for in post and or for which I'd have to limit my artistic vision. And I, for one, either cannot or will not take your pick. In either case, the result is the same. Take the time to try correcting chromatic aberration in post if we're talking video. Furthermore, if you or I are most often shooting at smaller apertures, we have to ask ourselves, why not just get something like Tamron's also very tasty and keenly priced at just $200, 35 millimeter, 2.8 DI3 something or other prime. 
Why not a single spend of 900 for the Tamron 28 to 75 I mentioned earlier? All without unsatisfying aperture rings, as in none at all, actually. Speaking of video, the good news is that both lenses have really smooth and quiet autofocus in video mode, with minimal focus breathing at the distances and use cases which matter to me anyway. Like this. The not so good news is that the focus throw when in manual is quite long, and I have not figured out how to adjust that on our A7 IV. I don't think I can, but with a menu system still inscrutable to most of us, I could well be wrong. The bad news I've already mentioned, chromatic aberration in video cannot be easily corrected in post. As far as I'm personally concerned, it can't be fixed at all. And the aperture ring, again, on the 50, 1.8 only, so maybe it's just a one-off copy issue, makes smooth adjustment between rapidly changing lighting conditions as in moving from indoors to outdoors all but impossible, which is frustrating, really. These are the three things that keep it from being a great video lens, too. All of which leaves us where, precisely? I'll sum it up this way. I expected I'd like these lenses very much, but in the end, I'm a little bit surprised to tell you that I just can't get past the chromatic aberration wide open and the suboptimal operation of the aperture ring. Again, it could be a one-off, but still, it shouldn't be there. It's a shame, really, because these lenses are stunningly sharp for the price, and their autofocus and focus breathing control are solid. They confirm, once again, that in some ways, Viltrox remains a company to watch, but I'd urge the company to get Mark II versions of both lenses out quickly, which fully address these issues. Until then, if you're looking for an inexpensive full-frame 35 prime for your Sony camera, I'd suggest either relaxing your demand for a 1.8 maximum aperture and going for that $200 Tamron 35 2.8 I mentioned earlier, or I'd suggest saving up and going with Sigma's excellent $600 35 f2 DGDN i-series. It's quite sharp, much better corrected, comes with a faultless aperture ring, and feels special in hand. Sony's 40mm f2.5 also comes in around 600, but this is another very worthy lens, one which some might argue offers a more useful field of view if you can have only one lens, and I... yeah, I might agree. At 50mm, you can find a much less expensive alternative to the Viltrox in Sony's own FE50 1.8, and it is better corrected for chromatic aberration. I don't particularly like its build quality nor its autofocus performance, I don't really love its resolving power either, but I think it's an unbeatable starter lens for something like an A7 III or A7C at the price. Alternatively, I'd again suggest saving up, maybe even sacrificing one stop for that 42.5, or if 50 really floats your boat, Sony's 50mm version of that same lens, their 52.5. This is another very sharp lens with quick, silent, and sure autofocus, and an aperture ring that feels good in hand and doesn't suffer nearly as much chromatic aberration wide open as the Viltrox. Maybe split the baby with Sigma's lovely little $550 2.8. You could save up for quite a bit longer. Do not do this on a credit card. And pony up two grand for Sony's 50mm f1.2 G Master and or $1,400 for their 35 f1.4 G Master. You could save for significantly shorter period of time and get Sony's $750 35 1.8 or for the same price, Sigma's 35 1.4 either of which is far more compelling in my book than these first-generation Viltroxes. Although... Huh. There does seem to be a hole in the industry for moderately fast, no optical compromise, autofocusing 51.8 or f2, around 500 bucks. Oh, wait, there is. Nikon's utterly brilliant Z51.8 S, which I've seen on sale as low as... You guessed it, 500 bucks. That lens alone is justification enough for some of us to enter the Nikon system, as is any one of the other 1.8s in that lineup. Just saying. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below because this is an incredible audience. If you'd like a copy of our Streets of New York, the book, head over to www.3bmep.com slash books. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one video session with me for a portfolio review, explore or hone your artistic voice, select gear and more, sign up at www.3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, consider supporting our work by using our no cost to you affiliate links down below. 
picking up some official three blind men and an elephant swag at 3bmep.threadless.com, sending coffee money via PayPal, or best of all, join us as a patron over at Patreon. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it. <laughs>